make it tonight will have the option. So the so those who could not make it tonight have the option to watch it later. Um, thank you for coming and we'll get started in a few minutes. In the meantime, enjoy our mascot spike number two, the number two pencil. Well, I think we're ready to get started. Um, welcome to the 2022 Summit launch. Today we'll be hearing some introductions from our tutors, uh, talk about the history of Summit, the cover, and hear some words from our writing specialist and staff advisor, Jesse Goodman, our dedicatee, Elise Tomlinson, and the Ernestine Hayes Award for Excellence in Academic Writing recipient, Sabrina Croft. Um, just to remind everybody of some Zoom etiquette, we do encourage you to have your video on for some silent feedback, nodding, smiling, clapping, snapping, et cetera. Um, but we do ask that you keep your Mac off, your mic off to avoid interrupting our speakers. And the text box will be moderated by our tutors should any questions come up. Okay, so first we'll start with some introductions. And for this, I'll hand it over to Sabrina Croft. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Sabrina and uh, I'm a marine biology major here at UAS. I'm 22 years old. Um, I will be graduating by the end of the semester and I have been a tutor at the Writing Center ever since the beginning of last semester and I'm really passionate about it. I really enjoy it. Um, originally, I am from Colorado, uh, but I, I moved here because there's no ocean in Colorado. So. Um, I'm really enjoying that here. Um, so I hope to eventually um, go into uh, an ecology or conservation related field, um, especially as it relates to marine mammals. Um, more on that later. And um, but in my free time, I like to um, listen to punk rock, play video games, um, go running, watch movies and TV and write fiction. Um, and so um, I will also do a brief introduction for another tutor here at the Writing Center, Autumn Daigle. She couldn't make it today, unfortunately, but um, she is a 19-year-old um, English major um, with an em emphasis in literature, um, and she is also getting her Outdoor Studies certificate. Her lifetime goal is to uh, become a high school English teacher and also commercially fish during the summers um, because she just... She's just that hardcore. Um, and she loves to write and be outside, obviously, since she is a writing tutor and um, very, very at home here in Alaska. Um, and yeah, when, when she's not in the writing center, she's outside hiking, foraging, rock climbing, um, all that stuff. And um, as we will uh, talk about later, she also designed the cover for Summit this year. So more on that later. Hi everyone, I'm Francesca Johnson. This is my first semester study, um, tutoring at the Writing Center here. I'm a marine biology major and minoring in mathematics. I decided to come up to Juno because it was a lot closer to home than my previous university and I've been having a really great time here this year. And when I'm not at the Writing Center, I guess I like to dabble in a little bit of everything like writing, drawing, baking and sports. And I recently started sewing, so. Thank you both. Um, my name is Jaylene Muller and I'm a tutor here at the UAS Writing Center. I've been tutoring here the past two semesters. Um, 
I'm a senior at UAS majoring in English and environmental studies with an emphasis in creative writing. And I was also the junior editor for Title Echoes this year. I also wanted to introduce our other coworker, Olive Brand, who could not be here tonight. Um, Olive Brand is an English and biology major with a concentration on literature and the environment. They grew up in Eastern Colorado and moved to Southeast for the, for the rain. Hiking, camping, and road trips are some of their favorite things, and they love writing in and about the, out, about the outdoors. Okay, and to that, I hand it off to our writing specialist, Jesse Goodman. Hi, everyone. I'm Jesse. I have the honor of working with these wonderful tutors. I will toot my own horn a bit because I feel like I have a fantastic team. Um, I guess that's their horns I'm tooting to, but it's been awesome. I've only been at UAS a little over a year and to see the second edition of Summit published since I've gotten here and the first in print is very exciting. I feel very lucky to be a part of it and to see this group work and do amazing stuff. You'll hear more gushing from me about the tutors and the student writers later, but I'm Jesse. Come on down to the bottom floor of Egan Library if you ever want to say hi. Okay, so to start things off, we would like to do some thank yous. Um, well, one second. <clears throat> we would like to thank the faculty judges, Jay Schapansky, Tom Thornton, and David Noon. Also the student judges, Sienna Chubach, Ian Hoke, and Jack Immel the library staff for all of their support, Elise Tomlinson, our library team, our library dean for all the help she's been in this whole process. Thank you to student government for funding the Ernestine Hayes Award, the past tutors and past writing specialist, Allison Neeland. Um, thank you to our writing specialist and staff advisor, Jesse Goodman. And thank you to Chancellor Karen Carey, Provost Marin Havig, and the Dean of Arts and Sciences, Karen Silkaitis. Um, Next slide, please. So first, we like to I would like to share a little bit about the history of Summit. Um, although Olive Brand could not be here today, they shared a lot. They shared and they shared a bunch of information about how Summit came to be because they're one of the original founding members of Summit. So I'll read a little bit of what they shared. Largely inspired by Title Echoes and other un undergraduate publication opportunities at other universities, the UAS Ryan Center tutors in the fall of 2019, Rain Billings, Olive Brand, Braden File, Alicia Steiner, and Megan Trebek wanted to offer a space for undergraduate students at UAS to publish their research and academic writing. Dr. Andrea Lunsford, Professor Emerita at Stanford University, visited the UAS Writing Center that same fall and she provided a groundwork of opportunity for the US Writing Center to improve and expand, including an academic journal originally pitched by Rain Billings. Following Dr. Lunsford's visit, interim UAS professor history, Dr. Michael Collins took over as faculty lead on the project. Along with Dr. Collins and writing specialist, Allison Nealon, the tutors built Summit from the ground up. They researched advertised, fundraised, fundraised, and met with professionals at UAS in the publishing industry to create the journal. As an effort to aid the funds for the journal, the project was combined with the Ernestine Hayes Award for Excellence in Academic Writing Essay Contest. 10 students submitted their work that year and six were choosing, chosen to be published. Before the first journal could be printed, however, the university went on lockdown because of COVID and efforts were continued from a distance. The first edition of Summit was published digitally in April, 2020, and the second, second edition was created completely online through the 2020 to 2021 school year. Writing specialist, Jesse Goodman joined the project in December, 2020, and we have appreciated all of her guidance and help since then. With that, we are happy to officially announce the publication of the 2021-2022 edition of Summit the third annual installment. 
With a cover designed by our tutor, Autumn Daigle, this is the first year in which we have a physical copy of the journal. A record number of students are being published, nine, nine UAS undergraduates, including this year's contest winner, marine biology student and writing center tutor, Sabrina Croft. The other authors include Randy J. Brennan Jr., Olive Brand, Kiefer Brown, Carolyn Fenno, Crystal Gray, Francesca Johnson, Skadu Jules, and Elizabeth Talmadge. Congratulations to all those who have been published and thank you to all of our submitters and everyone who made this edition of Summit possible. We look forward to next year in which we hope to hold our launch ceremony in person. With that being said, I would like to hand it over to Jessie to share some of her thoughts. Hi again, everyone. Um, I apologize in advance. The allergies that come with spring are really affecting me. So if you see a little tear, I am emotional because I'm so proud of the tutors, but that's probably the allergies. <laughs> um, I'm going to read what I wrote for the forward for my little part of the presentation because I don't think I could say any more about how proud I am both of our tutors and the students that submitted and thankful for their professors and for our board. So I'm just going to read what I wrote and hopefully that shows just how amazed I am by how this project came together. For me, Summit represents pride. I'm so proud of the Writing Center tutors who took such ownership of this project and created a remarkable collection of student work. I'm proud of the undergraduate students who submitted the work they put so much effort and time into. Proud that they have a place designed especially for them to showcase their writing when not many academic publications honor undergraduate work. I know how proud these students' professors must be to see a piece of writing go from outline to award-winning essay. And I'm proud of the original student tutors who conceptualized and founded Summit, whose legacy endures in the journal. After the past couple of years, everyone at UAS deserves some bragging rights. We've all accomplished so much in such a difficult period just by continuing to put one foot in front of the other. Now is the time to pat ourselves on the backs, reflect on our successes as we cautiously turn the page. Do you like my little journal metaphor there? Um, the summit reflects the WC or the Writing Center's belief that writing is akin to climbing a mountain. And this journal is the peak from which writers can shout their victories and be proud of making it to the top with a completed piece. But it's not only students who should claim bragging rights on a job well done. Their professors can also crow from the mountaintop for they have been alongside the students as they climb. They we received many wonderful submissions for this edition of Summit, and though we were unable to publish them all, we value each student's climb up that mountain and the professors who provided the ropes and harnesses needed to make it. As you read through the journal, take a moment to reflect on the uphill journey that each student took and the people who made the ascent with them. Join me in the pride I feel at all their accomplishments, and remember that you deserve to be proud of yourself for the mountains that you've had to climb. I wanna give a special thanks to our current tutor team whose dedication warms my heart and who help students summit that peak every day. So amazing job. I can't wait to hold this book in my hands. Um, so since Autumn can't be here, I'm gonna pivot a little bit. I'm gonna talk about her art because even though this is the first time that we've shown it to the public, it already has huge fans. Everyone that we've given a sneak peek to, a sneak peek to has been blown away. Autumn is not only an amazing tutor, but a fantastic artist. When we were first ready to start thinking about what this book would look like, we didn't know what we were gonna do. We thought maybe we would take a picture of the paintings that our Dean Elise had painted that are in the Writing Center and maybe do something with those. We thought we might take a cool photo of the mountains or a glacier or something like that and put a cool filter on it because the artist um, that we used last year has graduated and we didn't know where to turn. And then Autumn casually says, I could do some block printing. And I kind of freaked out because that's my favorite style of art. I think it's amazing. And she actually has jeans that she's block printed that she's sold in the past. And so I figured, you know what? That's a professional artist, let's do it. And she would come into work covered in ink saying I was block printing all morning. Sorry, I ran over here, I was almost late and show us these beautiful pieces. And I know that she did more than just this front and back cover. She did a lot of options for us and really put her heart and soul into it. And I'm so excited that I can say that this is 100% Writing Center created as far as the publication goes. Well, at least you're part of the Writing Center uh, honorarily. <laughs> and um, I'm so glad that we could have that be part of it because it's the first thing people see and I'm glad it's something that came from a tutor. So in your absence, Autumn, I thank you. 
And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Elise, which really, I can't say anything more about how grateful we are because we would not have this printed publication if it weren't for her. So uh, Elise, take it on over. Hi. Um, can you guys see me okay? <laughs> I am broadcasting from inside the shower of my dad's assisted living facility. So I hope you can hear me okay. But I didn't, I wasn't going to miss this for anything. I'm in Nebraska right now. And I am also just incredibly proud of the work that the student tutors did and their faculty. I haven't finished reading all of the articles yet, but it's such a diverse collection of work from I learned I've learned about monk seals, false killer whales, and how you can actually create studies for other people to potentially carry out in the future, which I think is totally amazing. Um, case studies on hydrofluorocarbons um, about uh, the Civil War era. And, and one of my favorites um, by Francesca, uh, Women of Little Importance, which is about one of my favorite movies, The Matrix. But after I read her um, article, I was like, oh, why didn't I see all these horrible things <laughs> that she that she saw because I'm a feminist and I didn't and I missed a lot and it was just very impressive. I think these original thinkers um, putting their uh, critical thinking skills to work is just amazing to see. I am so impressed. And, uh, you know, I was so happy to be a part of this, a very small part. I just want to say the funds that we used in order to print the publication this year comes from the Writing Center Support Fund, uh, which we had a very um, amazing donor endow that. But we need funds, you know, to print this every year. So if if a day of giving comes along and you're looking for a great fund to support, uh, the I'm going to do a shout out for the Writing Center Support Fund. But anyway, that's all for me. And thank you, thank you, thank you for putting this out. And it looks amazing. Thank you very much, Elise. Again, we appreciate all the help that you have been in this whole process. Like, I've been very excited that this happens. So thank you. Um, next, we're going to move on to the Ernst & Hayes Award for Excellence in Academic Reading. And I must say, I'm very excited to see at least, I mean, to see Ernestine Hayes here tonight. So thank you for coming. Um, about the Ernestine Hayes Award, this award is named after Pro Professor Emerda. Ernestine Hayes, who, and it strives to honor the commitments she made towards student achievement and the craft of writing. The paper that exhibits the strongest mastery of the core competencies is the recipient. These competencies are knowledge of the subject, information literacy, critical thinking, professionalism in writing, and an impactful topic and presentation. Now, as I've mentioned previously, our recipient this year is tutor and marine biologist major Sabrina Croft. Um, Sabrina Croft is a senior here at UAS and will be graduating this spring, and she is also the Writing Center's Employee of the Year. Though we are all sad she is leaving us, we are proud of all that she has accomplished during her time here at UAS and beyond. With that, I hand it over to Sabrina. Well. Thank you for that introduction, Shailene. I'm always flattered. <laughs> um, so um, I'll, first off, I just wanna say connection can be um, a little bit iffy here at housing. So if I get shaky or anything like that, don't hesitate to interrupt and let me know and I'll try to fix the problem. But um, in any case, um, I'll, I'll start by saying that I am so honored and flattered to have even been considered for the Ernestine Hayes essay contest. Um, working behind the scenes on Summit granted me a greater appreciation for all the labor and originality that goes into each and every essay um, written by students for their classes here at UAS. Um, as such, I was well aware of the erudite competition I was up against. Quite frankly, I was more concerned with displaying the abundant talent of other UAS students than with winning the essay contest myself. You can imagine my surprise then when the Writing Center team received the scores back from the judges and lo and behold, my essay had the highest score. <laughs> um, I'm not one to brag about myself and I hope none of you watching came to see that either because I am physically incapable of, of tooting my own horn for too long. Um, so instead, I'll, I'll just give a little context for how this essay came to be. And in order to do that, 
I'll take you all the way back to 2008 when I decided I wanted to become a marine biologist. At the time, I became utterly obsessed with marine mammals, which I hear are a hot topic around here. It's just the impression I get. Um, but my family fed my obsession by giving me a marine mammal guidebook, which I still have. Um, uh, and uh, with it, I familiarized myself with countless different dolphin and whale species. And one species uh, that intrigued me was the false killer whale, an elusive creature that exhibits a particular affinity for associating with other oceanic dolphins outside of its own species. Why? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Um, scientists have a hard time explaining this interspecies mixing too, but eight-year-old me wasn't satisfied with a shrug of the shoulders. No, 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 no. Eight-year-old me wanted answers and she would have them. Fast forward to January, 2021, and I'm a college junior in the process of transferring from a university in my home state of Colorado to our beloved University of Alaska Southeast. As far as I was concerned at this point, I was finally right where I wanted to be. I was finally on the road to becoming a scientist. I was, I was right next to the ocean, the ocean. <laughs> um, and the best part uh, was that one of my classes that semester was biology 384, marine mammalogy. I was excited, very, very excited. <laughs> um, now, this class involved a conservation paper assignment based around a marine mammal species of our choice. Uh, we were meant to research the species, learn about their conservation status, and come up with a conservation action plan to help preserve the species. Remembering the mystery surrounding the false killer whale, I decided to pick the very same as my research species. So during the next few months of research for this conservation essay, I learned a few new facts. The first was this, we still don't know much about false killer whales. <laughs> They're elusive, live out in the open ocean, and we don't even really know how many there are out there. Uh, what we do know is that they are classified as near threatened by the IUCN red list as of 2019. <clears throat> uh, there are a few populations that have been studied, such as those off of the Hawaiian coast. Um, but others like the New Zealand population are not as thoroughly understood. Clearly, I surmise biologists are still at a point where we need more baseline information if we're going to make sound conservation decisions on false killer whales. The second fact I learned came from living in the town of Juneau itself, which has a culture heavily based on fishing. I learned that many of my classmates, the UAS staff and other Juno community members are or have been involved in the commercial fishing industry at one point or another. They certainly were not the villains my formerly landlocked self pictured when pondering the, the selfish, destructive, greedy fisher folk sucking the ocean dry of her lively bounty. Um, <laughs> that was not what I saw. I realized something very important while going to school here in Alaska. Um, but that villainy that we see in pro-conservation Hollywood productions like the Lorax, it doesn't exist. Reality is much more along the lines of uh, the original Lorax written by Dr. Seuss. Um, folks are just trying to get by and put food on the table for themselves and for their loved ones. And fishing just happens to be the way that they can do that. These people do in fact care about the environment, doubly so since a healthy ocean is what provides them with their livelihood. So I was gratefully humbled by the community within Juno and I resolved myself to approach even the perceived enemies of conservation with compassion and an empathetic ear. The final fact I learned was that as I proceeded through my classes at UAS, I finally felt like a scientist. I was reading peer-reviewed literature and learning something new about marine biology, which I loved so much, every single day. I was discussing fascinating science with my peers and exchanging new perspectives. God forbid I was even starting to make new friends. <laughs> um, in writing this conservation essay, I felt that 
I was not only consuming science at the level of a true biologist, but I was contributing to the scientific conversation in a way that I couldn't in my landlocked urban previous campus. No offense, UCD, you're just not a great school for marine biology majors. What are you gonna do? It's fine. <laughs> So by the end of spring semester 2021, I had completed and proudly turned in an essay in my marine mammalogy class entitled New Zealand False Killer Whale, Sudorca Crassidens, Spatial Associations with Common Bottlenose Dolphins, Tercia Truncatus, and Longline Fisheries. A year later, this essay won me the Ernestine Hayes Award for Excellence in Essay Writing. An excerpt from the conclusion is as follows. While false killer whales remain vastly understudied in many regions, New Zealand has a population of particular interest. Associations with common bottlenose dolphins and potential longline fisheries interactions are specialized areas of study that can be focused on in the Bay of Islands. With commercial longlining being one of the most contentious conservation issues relating to false killer whales, it is especially pertinent to understand the extent of these interactions. Therefore, a satellite tag study similar to Hawaiian false killer whale experiments is recommended for the Bay of Islands false killer whale population, investigating their spatial patterns, association with bottlenose dolphins, and longline interactions. A pelagic preference is expected, with more bottlenose dolphin associations near the shore, though this is debatable. Longline interactions are also suspected to be minimal. Easier tracking of false killer whales, informed decisions on marine protected area placement, and educating fisheries can all benefit from the results of the proposed study. This data is all important to demystifying these elusive pelagic predators in order to get a better grasp on the threats this species faces and the necessary conservation act actions required to protect it. All in all, though I am surprised to have won this award, I am glad it was this essay that won. Uh, this essay epitomizes what I believe to be a true coming of age moment within my life. And it synthesizes so many important issues in science that I believe to be essential considerations in conservation efforts, both from a scientific and sociological perspective. I want to thank my marine mammalogy professor and faculty advisor, Dr. Heidi Pearson, for her invaluable instruction, both in classes and in planning my academic path. I send a big thank you to all of my professors for that matter, for being so generous with all of their knowledge and encouragement while I've been at UAS. To the summit judges, I appreciate not only you all taking time out of your schedules to help judge students' academic works for publications, but also for the honor of choosing my essay as the winner. I must, of course, give thanks to my fellow Writing Center tutors, talented Autumn, personable Olive, encouraging Francesca, and adroit Shailene. Working with you all has been an unforgettable adventure. To our supervisor, Jesse Goodman, I cannot express enough just how grateful I am to work under you and with you, not only to help students improve their writing, not only to improve my own writing, but also to help me grow as a person. Thank you so much. And finally, I want to acknowledge the unceded lands wherein I wrote the essay, that of the Tlingit and the neighboring tribes of the Simchian and Haida. In addition, I also want to acknowledge the unceded lands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, Ocheti Shakohan, and Ute peoples, upon which I was raised. Atlen Gunashish to the stewards of these lands. Uh, thank you all so much for listening to me ramble uh, and thank you so much for this award. I'm truly, truly honored. And uh, with that, I return the floor to Shailene. Thank you, Sabrina. That was a beautiful speech. Um, for those of you who don't know, the photo on, the, on your screen right now is of a false killer whale and is drawn by Sabrina's friend and coworker and roommate, Francesca Johnson. Okay. So next slide, please. So I would talk, I would like want to talk a little bit about what summit is going to be like next year. We are changing the um, the deadlines for next year. Although it will still open on December 1st, it is going to close on February 1st of the following year. And summit will be will consider submissions from any current undergraduate student taking courses 
through any of the three UAS campuses. Submissions must be coursework from the spring, summer, or fall semesters of 2022 and up to the submission deadline of spring 2023. Next slide, please. Okay. As Elise mentioned earlier, you can donate to and support both the Writing Center and future editions of Summit um, online. You can do so by scanning the QR code with your phone camera and gifting us or using the link displayed on the screen. Any support will be greatly appreciated as we do anticipate publishing future, edi future editions. Also, if you are interested in reading Summit, it will be available in the libraries, both physically and digitally through UAS. Um, copies will begin being distributed Monday, April 25th, and any published authors can come pick them up at the Writing Center. Well, goodbye everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. Ha, ha, ha.